Heating ethane dioic acid in glycerol produces methanoic acid, HCOH. Write the expression for the acid constant for methanoic acid, so HCOH plus H2O. It's an acid, so we make H3O plus, and the conjugate base, that's the HCOOH minus H plus, so HCOO minus. And then we know it's a weak acid because we know it's not a strong acid, so reversible reaction. And then once we got that, we can go straight from the equation to the K expression, righties over lefties. All coefficients are one, so don't have to worry about any exponents here. And then we leave out the H2O liquid by convention because it is a pure liquid. Thus, the concentration doesn't change as the reaction goes through. Calculation now, value of Ka for methanoic acid, calculate pH solution of methanoic acid, concentration 0.2. So we did a similar calculation back earlier in this review sheet. It's here because we've got a titration going on for it. Um, the value of Ka for methanoic acid, 1.8, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, um, here's our SCA chart, 0.2 for the HCOH. None of that, none of that. Change line minus x, x, and x. So at equilibrium, 0.2 minus x, x, and x. So again, the purpose of the SCA chart is to get all of the equilibrium values in terms of one variable, x, Popple that into what we know, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 is the Ka value, xx.2 minus x, all from the SCA chart. This is relatively small. If that's small, that tells us that we're not going to get very many products. If we don't have very many products, x will be small. And maybe x is small enough that we can ignore it when we subtract it from 0.2. So that means if that is the case, we can pop in 0.2 instead of 0.2 minus x. Multiply that out and we get x is 6 times 10 to the minus 3. Always check your assumption, check the percentage error. So 6 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 0.02 times 100 is 3%. So not hugely happy with the 3% error, but it's still within the 5% that I arbitrarily have dictated. It means that uh, the assumption is good enough. So go back over here. And we say that the concentration H3O plus or H plus is X, which is 6 times 10 to the minus 3. pH is minus log of that, which is 2.22. So the first part of this question could have been on the last movie. But it's this part here that is why I moved it into this next movie, because we talk about a buffer solution. What's a buffer? Well, a buffer solution is one in which you have a weak acid and its conjugate base both present in as close as possible to a one-to-one -one ratio. The further away you get from one-to-one, -one, the less buffering it can do. And I consider the maximum divergence from one-to-one -to, -one to be 10 to 1. OK, so we need a weak acid and its conjugate base. Well, here we've got a mixture of methanoic acid. So that is the HCOH and sodium methanoate, while well, sodium is a spectator ion, so we're just talking methanoate, which is HCOO minus. So if we have a solution that's got this and this in as close to a one-to-one -one ratio as possible, it's a buffer solution, and such a solution has a pH that is resistant to change when other acids or bases are added. So let's take this mixture and think about, first of all, let's add a strong acid. Well, if we add a strong acid to this mixture, it will be neutralized by a base. And we got this base here, the HCOO minus. So add the strong acid, reacts with that, okay, and initially shifts the equilibrium to the left, right, using up this added acid. Okay, so in other words, we're turning a strong acid into a weak acid. Now, after you've added that, then the buffer solution reattains equilibrium. But the point is that the effect of the strong acid was negated or hugely negated by the fact you had this base there for it to react with. The same idea if we add a strong base. Well, if we add a strong base, that will be neutralized by the weak acid. As it's neutralized by the weak acid, it will make more of the conjugate base. So we can think about it shifting the equilibrium in that direction, using up the added base. Now, of course, after you've done all that, it will re-establish, this mixture will re-establish equilibrium in which you have less of the HCOH and more of the HCOO minus than before. But the important thing is that the added strong base has been used up. So the effect of it is much, much, much smaller than it would have been if you didn't have the weak acid there for it to react with. 
So now I'm going to do a series of questions associated with titrations. Um, a lot of this is the experimental aspects, so we'll discuss some of those experimental aspects as we get to them. But anyway, we've got here solution of iodic acid, um, iodic 5 acid, HiO3, asked to find concentration by titration with sodium hydroxide, and of course this is a monoprotic acid, so that means that when you neutralize it with a strong base, it's a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one reaction. Rinse the air at water, filled it with the iodic acid solution, 25 mils of sodium hydroxide, concentration 0.125 were used for each titration, following results were obtained. Now we'll actually use these results in a little while, but part one is just sodium hydroxide is described as a base, state what is meant by the term base. Now of course, you're going to say proton or H plus acceptor because that's what you're told about. But it doesn't really work very well for when you have sodium hydroxide or any other alkali metal hydroxides because of course that just dissociates to straight off give you OH minus in water. Okay, now the way I would prefer to think of it is better illustrated here as the Arrhenius definition which is just something that dissociates or produces OH minus in water. Either way, it's the same thing, because when something is a base in water, it makes OH minus. All right, now result of titration was too high. And certainly you can look through and you can see 19.2 is significantly different than the 18.6, 18.7, 18.55 and 18.55. One reason why a fault in the practical method could explain this result. In other words, the volume is too much. Okay, the assumption is that the student put in too much liquid, right, giving us this very high result. So therefore, two ways that you could think of this. First of all, that the student overshot the endpoint, in other words, added more than um, he or she he should have done. Or, of course, the burette was not rinsed out with the acidic solution properly, so you had some water remaining in the burette. That water would count for the volume, but it wouldn't count chemically to neutralize the HiO3. Now use the results from this titration to calculate the mean volume of the iodic acid solution and hence the concentration of the acid in moles per cubic decimeter. So ignoring value one, the average is 18.6 by adding all these up and dividing by four. Sodium hydroxide, we took the 0.025 cubic decimeters, 25 cubic centimeters, 0.025 cubic decimeters. And we know the concentration was 0.125 moles per cubic decimeter. So that tells us the moles of the NaOH. Now it was a one to one reaction. So therefore the moles of NaOH is the same as the moles of the HiO3. And we already know the volume that contain that many moles of HiO3 thus giving us 0 0.0168 moles per cubic decimeter for the concentration. Pretty straightforward um, calculation, I hope you would agree. So now we're taking some 25 cubic centimeters samples of sodium carbonate titrated against hydrochloric acid. Here are the results. Okay, so the first thing is, what's the mean titer that should be used to determine the concentration of the hydrochloric acid? Um, well, we've got 26.1, 26.2, 26.3, and 26.65. Thus, you would probably want to leave this one out. It's a little bit further away. The average of the remaining three, 26.20. Burette used in titrations has an uncertainty for each read and plus or minus 0.05. Estimate the maximum percentage error of the titer in titration four. Show you're working. Okay, well, you've got two readings. You've got a reading at the start and a reading at the end, and each one has got a plus or minus 0.05 cubic centimeter error. So therefore the combined error at the start 0.05 and at the end 0.05 is 0.1. If you assume they don't cancel out, if you assume the worst it could be is that each one is uh, either both negative 0.05 or positive 0.05, meaning the error is 0.01. Percent error, 0 0.01 over the 26.3 that was determined times 100, which is 0.038%. Not horrible. Other errors reading burette suggest one reason why incorrect titers may have been obtained when carried out the titrations. Explain the effect of this error on the value of the titer obtained. 
Well, first of all, and um, this is kind of a silly one, but most of these errors are silly. If you kept the funnel in the burette, so you got the little bit of the funnel stuck down, well, therefore, the volume that you're measuring is going to be less, okay, because the more acid dropped into the burette from the funnel. Difficult to see when the indicator changed colour. So in other words, you overshot the endpoint, so you added in too much. Probably why this one was messed up. Jet not filled or air bubble in the burette, therefore the value of the tides were more since the acid was used to fill the jet or the bubble. In other words, there was acid used to fill something in the burette, not to react with the um, carbonate. That would be were probably if it was the first one that was messed up, but the assumption is you did one titration and then you did another titration. So I don't see that this one would necessarily be applicable. And I also don't see why this one would be applicable, because if you did the first titration, well, you've already rinsed your acid out beforehand, blah, blah, blah. But this is a standard error. If you didn't rinse with the acid beforehand, um, you've got water still in the burette, and that water doesn't count towards the reaction, but it does count towards measuring the volume. Okay. Generally, though, I think first, third, and fourth bit silly. It's um, the, the end point that can be... Um, overshot not necessarily because you can't see when the indicator change color much more likely to be because you're adding in the chitrant too quickly